Take your seats, ladies and gentlemen. The Friends of Fiddler's Green are about to begin what will become known in circles from time forward as, as the second half. The second set. <laughs> Ah, there's nobody listening to me but you, Tam. Yeah, Good nobody's evening. listening to you. Good evening. How are you today? We would like to start with something. You may wonder how this band operates, but basically the only thing we actually practice if we practice at all is the dance tunes. The rest of it, we wing it when we're up here. We have no idea what the next person is going to do. Uh, it's been like that for 25 years. I don't think it's going to change now. And, uh, but it's, so, it's entertaining for ourselves yeah, as well. Yeah, We've been known to spend an entire afternoon rehearsing something and then we go on the stage and we don't do any of it. And we have no idea why that happens. Money, I'm Scottish for God's sake. <laughs> I'm a bit ridiculous giving out money. Where do you get these people from? I thought you all went to university in this town. We're going to do for you linguists in the audience the French, three French tunes, ah, the French dance tunes. They are called, the first one is called... La Première. La Première, of course. <laughs> the next one is called the second tune. <laughs> and the third one is called the last one. <laughs> La Bastrain. La, La Première, <laughs> Un Avant, and La Bastrain.
Tom Rolling at home. For example, we didn't know he was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. so, I'm going to sing an immigrant song. Stone? Oh, I'm sorry, were you speaking? Oh, I'm just checking the mechanics here. Oh, well, just check the mechanics then. Sit down, shut up. Okay, I'll tell you when it's your turn. I am sitting down. Um, is his mic too loud? I think it is a bit. <laughs> <laughs> This is a song, an immigrant song, written by a man called... It's a very popular name, but it's not the same guy, Tommy Sands. It's a different Tommy Sands, though, from the one that you all know. His brother, but, Tommy. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sands listen, don't kid about it. My, I have two uncles, both cousin James Edward by my grandfather, who thought it was really neat to have them both the same name. Short-term so. memory loss. Yeah. <laughs> So, See you, Jimmy. <laughs> and to this day, one's called Albert and the other's called Joe, and I, nobody knows why. <laughs> My uncle Albert was a character, and they lived, yeah, they watched Coronation Street, oh. well, that type of housing, and they had outside toilets, four houses with four outside toilets. And one day, the plumber came to fix them, and he dug up this big pile of shit, and he just left it lying there and went home. So my uncle was looking at it and thinking, I can't get rid of that, it stinks. So he shoved it in a bag, and at midnight he went down to throw it in the river, and a cop caught him. So, all right, what's in the bag? He said, shite. Cop said, what's in the bag? He said, shite. Cop said, police station. Empty it. <laughs> <laughs> Found him five pounds for disorderly behaviour, even although they told him he'd do it. I don't know. That's my Uncle Abba. Anyway... But this is a song, it's an immigrant song written by this guy called Tommy Sands. And, it, and, it, and somebody in the audience was just telling me there that his favourite joke that he heard from me, he's been telling it for years on the, on the lecture circuit, yeah. is about three immigrants from India to Canada who had to get... The guy says, look, we're given tests now, we just can't let everybody in. But the place is crowded as it is. So he says, well, it's OK by us. Please, ask your test. So they said to the first guy, I say, do you know the meaning of Easter? He says, well, of course, that is when you're taking a large tree and put it in a corner and put bubbles and beads all around it, and then you're putting gifts and presents at the bottom. The guy says, oh, God, says, that's Christmas. You can't come in. Second guy, do you know the meaning of Easter? He says, well, of course, that is when you're taking a turkey and you're putting meat all up his bottom, <laughs> and then... <laughs> And, th and then you're taking him and putting him in the oven and then you're all going to wear funny hats and sing songs and eat the guy's season. Third guy, do you know the meaning of Easter? He says, oh, yes. that is about the man called Jesus Christ. The guy says, oh, thank God. He says, you are taking him and you are nailing him to a large wooden cross. And when he is dead, you are taking him down and you are putting him in a cave and rolling a rock across the front of the cave. Three days later, mysteriously, the rock is rolling away. He is coming out and seeing his shadow and going back in for seven minutes. I work I work with many guys from India and they think that's just the wildest joke. <laughs> the chorus of this goes, there was Dancing there. I'm still working on the. There was dancing, romancing, and stuff. Prancing. Stuff. Prancing. There was dancing, romancing. Never more to roam. There'll be rolling in the hay and whiskey in the tea when the boys come rolling home. And as usual, it's about Scottish immigrants who leave Scotland and go to America. And the only thing they talk about is the day they're going to go back to Scotland, which most of us don't do, right? So, here we go. I always will remember the day we sailed away Sailing out to Glasgow in the morning Our hearts were on tomorrow as we kissed the girls goodbye But our thoughts were all about the day returning And there was dancing romance and never more will roam And he'll be rolling in the hay And 
whiskey and the tea when the boys come rolling home. Where's that wee bit you're putting in the middle? Well, at last we reached the other side in New York City Fair. In spite of rain and wind and stormy weather, we both sat down together then to drink a part of glass and swore one day we'd all return together. And there were dances and romances, and never more we roam. And there was rolling in the hay. And whiskey in the tea as the boys came rolling home. Tony went to Boston and Jim to Buffalo, and Ali went as far as California. I used to get some letters then, but that was long ago. They always wrote to Scotland and returned, and there was dancing. And never more we'll roll I'll be rolling in the hay And whiskey in the tea When the boys come roll I see you play it now And there was dancing, romancing, and never more we roll. I'll be rolling in the hay and whiskey in the tea when the boys come roll. I must be over ninety now. My grandson's by my side, and I'm stuck here in Austin and so dreaming. He says he'll take me home again to rest my weary head. But I leave him a legacy and dreaming, and there was dancing, romancing, and never more to roll. For they'll be rolling in the hay and whiskey and the tea when the boys come rocking again, oh. And there'll be dancing, romancing, and never. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, I'd been asked for two songs that had something to do with Peter Bellamy. This one was actually written by him, and it's part of um, uh, his wonderful ballad opera called The Transports, which is like, a, it's about the, the origins of Australia, um, which, as many of you will know, uh, when, when you guys got your independence, Britain had nowhere left to send their criminals. <laughs> sent them to Canada. So they, turned, so they turned in the other direction and sent them down to, uh, to New Holland, as it was called there, Botany Bay, uh, places like that. Tasmania. Tasmania. And um, this is a, a basically, a, the, the ballad opera is about uh, a, a bunch of people, who are part of a family and some other hangers-on, who uh, were convicted of the usual petty offences and uh, transported down there and later became... Uh, apparently, it's based on, on, on fact, later became one of the founding families of, uh, of Australia, um, which says a lot about Australians, I guess. I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really. Um, anyway, uh, this song is called, this actually happens before uh, they start their journey, and uh, it's called uh, Norwich Jail, and that was apparently one of the places where uh, these guys were kept before transportation. And it's got a wonderful chorus, and the chorus goes like this. If I remember it. So early in the morning, the turnkey rings his bell. So early in the morning, we wish his soul to hell. So early in the morning.
morning when the night begins to pale We wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail Give that a try so early in the morning the turnkey rings his bell So early in the morning we wish his soul to hell So early in the morning when the night begins to pale We wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail Oh wow, the air is foul, the food is bad, the company not choice Twould make you scowl to hear the mad old turnkey's rasping voice. Twould make you wonder, would you ever live to tell the tale of the hardships and the suffering you've known in Norwich Jail? So early in the morning, the turnkey rings his bell. So early in the morning, we wish his soul to hell. So early in the morning when the night begins to pale We wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail Oh, our water here is scummy green, our beds is heaps of straw There's water running down the walls, rats running o'er the floor There's naught to eat but rotten meat that'd make a dog turn pale Yes, it's dainty board and lodgings when you come to Norwich Jail So, so early in the morning the turnkey rings his bell So early in the morning we wish his soul to hell so early in the morning when the night begins to pale We wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail Now and when we fancy's bathing we paddles in the drains And when we want a concert we rattles of our chains And when we want a banquet we drink sludge and call it ale if you want a good time, commit a crime and come to Norwich Jail. So early in the morning, the turnkey rings his bell. So early in the morning, we wish his soul to hell. So early in the morning, when the night begins to pale, we wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail. Now and if you fancy gaming, the races run be fleas. The stakes are perilously high across all mouldy cheese. The first time that I tried me luck, I nearly lost me shirt. But lucky for me, they couldn't see the bugger for the dirt. So early in the morning, the turnkey rings his bell. So early in the morning, we wish his soul to hell. So early in the morning when the night begins to pale We wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail Now if they'd sent us to America today we would be free But since their revolution that land we'll never see We are not for New England sure three thousand miles away but they say we're bound for some further ground and they call it Botany Bay. So early in the morning the turnkey rings his bell. So early in the morning we wish his soul to hell. So early in the morning when the night begins to pale we wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail. Well, perhaps it's out by India or maybe near Japan all off the coast of Canada or in the hills of Spain But wherever that strange land may be we know it cannot fail To be a far, far better place than stinking Norwich Jail So early in the morning the turnkey rings his bell so early in the morning we wish his soul to hell So early in the morning when the night begins to pale We wonder will we ever see the last of Norwich Jail just a little note for the sound man. When Ian's singing, there's a ringing sound, and it's either in the monitors. Is it outside? Is it okay outside? So it must be just in the monitor, if you can just... It is outside of it. No. Just tweak them or the something. Ringing? I just oh. need to shut up, that's all. Oh, is it reverb? Is it reverb? Yeah. You mean a, there's... Oh, it's a turnkey. Yeah. 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 Right. We'd rather have adverb, mm -hmm. actually. Reverb. Reverb. Uh, please. 
Sam actually likes reverb because it reminds him of work. It's kind of down in the sewers, you know. See, what he's trying to tell you is that I work in sewage treatment. Maybe shit to you, but it's bread and butter to me. <laughs> Simple as that. I work in sewage treatment. There's one thing when the unemployment comes, I'm not going to be unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of said product, oh, actually, talking about product, um, Ian, did you bring Hang the Piper with you at all? I got a few copies, yes. Okay, I'm going to play a tune that was off that that record. Oh, that's very kind of you, thank you. Yes, but when you get the record now, that tune will be missing. You don't think so? Because he's taken it off. I think. <laughs> yeah. Don't buy it. <laughs> or rush out and get it now before he plays. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> I think Ian's forgotten this one, but uh, this is a uh, tune called O'Connell's Lamentation. It's great when you get to uh, you, you, you get a tune off a record you really like and you learn it up, and then you get to go on stage and play it with the guy that played all the accompaniment for it on the record. <laughs> Did yeah. the guitar for it. <laughs> this is known as the plywood tune, O'Connell, O'Connell's yes. no, no, Lamination. No, the guitar's Lamination, yes, O'Connell's <laughs> Lamination. That was Tam's joke, actually. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Why not? story I told last night, but I had such fun telling it, I'd like to tell it again. It's about a Scotsman who wins a holiday in Spain, in Barcelona. Uh oh. <laughs> he thinks, great, oh wait a minute, I can't speak Spanish, what will I do? So he goes down to the local Berlitz School of Languages and he says, excuse me, I'm, I have a problem here, I'm, I'm going to Spain in two weeks time for a holiday and I need to learn to speak Spanish, so could you see to it please? The guy said, don't be stupid. I can't learn to speak Spanish in two weeks. He said, well, what am I going to do? He said, well, what we normally recommend in these circumstances is you speak very slowly and very loudly. We find that works. <laughs> I 
right you are. He says, so off he goes to Spain, you see. Of course, being from Glasgow, first night he's in the pub. He says, good evening. I would like a pint of beer, please. Barman says, one pint of beer coming up, <laughs> sir. After a while, the barman says, excuse me, <laughs> sir. Am I right in thinking that you are from Glasgow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a coincidence. I'm from Glasgow, <laughs> too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the first guy says, in that case, why are we speaking Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Love that. <laughs> well, here's another of these songs about women being left behind knitting. Hmm? <laughs> Over rehearsals. <laughs> this is one of these songs about women being left behind knitting while Willie goes off to war. Generally speaking, what happened was he gets pressed away to sea and he says, Well, love, I'm off for seven long years to fight Napoleon. You'd better just stay here and knit. And she says, no, no. He's thinking, I'm off to Bermuda. <laughs> no, no. She says, I'll cut off my yellow hair and go along with you and be your faithful companion. Fat chance, he says. No, no, no. no. You stay here and knit. It's too dangerous out there in the seven seas. You see? Sometimes she actually dresses up as a sailor and goes off and catches him in flagrante with some Bermudan maiden. And that, that's another story. This one, she just stays yeah, behind. Me, there's no such place in Bermuda called that. <laughs> Flagrante, yeah. <laughs> red Bucky Hand. Malta. It's called Red Hand Bermuda. You never been there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Tom knows about Red Hand. We know that's another business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, anyway, so that's the story. Maybe I don't have to sing this anymore. But the, so, the chorus is, I know, know my love, which means always no, no, my I, I know, no. It means always no, no, my love. I know no, and the bonny wee lassie's answer was I know no. Bonnie lass, I own my heart to sail. And twice farewell, my bonny lass, I'll never see you mere. For I am bound to go, my love, where no one shall be known. And the bonny wee lass's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bonny wee lass's answer was, I know no. Oh, the king is wanting men, he said, and I for one must go. And for my very life, my dear, I dare not answer no. For I am bound to go, my love, where no one shall me know. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. Oh, stay at him, my bonny lad. And then a gang of war. A little, little day came, the dangers o' the war. For I am bound to go, my love, where no one shall me know. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. 
It's I'll cut off my yellow hair and go along with thee. I'll be a faithful comrade in Elka far country. Though you are bound to go, my love, where no one shall me know. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. Oh, stay at home, my bonny lass, and then a gang with me. For little, little day you can, the dangers o'er the sea. Though I am bound to go, my love, where no one shall me know. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. Farewell to Catkin's sunny braes, where rough times I have been. Farewell unto the banks of Clyde and bonny Glasgow Green. For I am bound to go, my love, where no one shall me know. And the bunny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bunny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. Farewell unto my comrades, dear, I own my heart to sail. Twice farewell, my bonny Jean, I'll never see you mail. But I am bound to go, my love, where no one shall me know. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. I know no, my love, I know no. And the bonny wee lassie's answer was, I know no. All these talks of ballad forms have brought to mind um, one of my favorite of the broken token ballads. And for those, I'm sure many people in the audience do know, but for those who don't, that's just a way of summing up another phenomenon that has been recorded in song traditions of, uh, generally speaking, the man who was more mobile in those eras, going off fortune hunting, off to war, whatever it might be, and so that his lover would recognize him when he returned in case he grew a beard or lost an arm in battle or something, they would exchange a token, a coin, a ring, so they could match them up and say, oh, it is you, Charlie, thank God, I waited seven years for you. You know, it's very why handy. on earth? Uh, where the hell have you been? Yeah, now? why on earth people would have waited seven years? Where, I don't know. Where's very the handy if you went on the subway. Yeah. <laughs> you take the ring out here, you still... Uh, the ring. <laughs> yes, the broken the tokens in the thing here is still ringing a bit for you. I'm actually convinced that the seven years, which is typical in song, was an insurance thing. You know, it couldn't, he couldn't come home sooner. However, this is one of my favorite of those ballads. A fair maid walking all in her garden, crushing flower beds all the while. She just ignores the cobblestone pathway thinks I shall be easy to beguile. So I stepped in view, saying, how do you do, ma'am? And may I ask your true love's name? Oh, Angus Hempstead is my true love. Have you brought me news from the raging main? Well, if Angus Hempstead is your true love, who many long years has been out to sea. He has become a well-known legend, and it's news of this I bring to thee. Twas while the wars were raging fiercely, both sides decided to stop for tea. And thinking to catch some fish for supper, old Angus he threw hook and line to sea. Now he hooked a shark that pulled him over and to the seabed dragged him down. The sunken ships there tore his body, but still our Angus refused to drown. He surfaced every 20 minutes, and as he did, we caught a view of torn and mangled Angus Hempstead whose blood in profusion it did spew. His long intestines hung beside him, his single arm it had no hand. 
From where we stood, his neck looked broken, and out his mouth and nose fell lumps of sand. Now when this fair maid heard my story, her stomach, it grew pale and sore. Somehow from this I deduced she was loyal, so I said, fair maid, feel sick no more. For I'm your true love, Angus Hempstead. Here is the ring you gave to me. Through thick and thin, through fair and foul, I had this ring to remember me. A ring like that I've never owned, sir. Twas a coin that's broke between Angus and me. I think you're either terribly mistaken or a bloody great twit far as I can see. So this couple never did get married and soon to bed they did not go. They never lived in a country cottage and of her cuckoo's nest he will never know. It's kind of like Mr. Bean goes to sea, isn't it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine this? The race course at Ascot, and the Duke of Edinburgh is walking down through the stables, browsing around, and he sees a groom giving something to a horse. He says, ah, Come here, my man. He says, Yes, sir. Why don't you just give that horse? He said, I just gave it a lump of sugar. He said, how do you know that Her Majesty is the, is the uh, president of this race course? And the, and the Queen Mother is the chairman, he says, and I'm a director, and so is Princess Margaret and Prince Charles. If there's any funny business going on with these horses, he says, it would reflect directly onto the royal family. He said, what did you give that horse? The guy says, I just, I just gave him some sugar, sir. He said, you go, sir. Okay, sugar, he says, but for God's sake, don't let anybody see you doing that because it doesn't look good. So later on, the jockey's getting on the horse and the groom says to the jockey, he says, this is like riding an armchair. He says, just sit on, hold on to the reins. He says, it's going to win and nothing is going to pass it. The jockey says, nothing. He says, well, maybe the Duke of Edinburgh, but that's <laughs> all. <laughs> We're going to play a couple of tunes now. Um, these are both sort of Scottish, although not really. The first one is a Shetland tune, and a lot of Shetlanders don't really regard themselves as Scottish, I think. Um, it was written by uh, the dean of all Shetland fiddlers, Tom Anderson, who's the man who taught Ali Bain all he knows. Uh, and it was written by Tom uh, soon after his wife died. It's called Das Locket Light, uh, which means the waning light. Uh, and the second one is uh, from Cape Breton, which is not Scotland either. Um, but oh, you know but it's very Scottish in character. Uh, it's even more Scottish than Scotland in character. Uh, and this, song, this particular tune is called Glencoe.
responds to many requests from my son. Why are you speaking? Why are you speaking Spanish? <laughs> here's, here's a wee story which I told to the audience last night, and I can't resist telling you tonight because I think it is one of the funniest stories I've heard in a long time. But a guy is a preacher, and he's in a church, and he preaches, and he has, a, he has a friend in the audience, and his friend comes back, the congregation, his friend comes back to see him, says, really good service, but his friend's got a black eye. He says, what happened to your eye, John? Oh, he says, a, a wee accident out in the church. He says, what happened? He says, well, he says, we were kneeled down to pray, and when we, after kneeling down, we stood up, and the lady in front of me had her cotton dress caught between the cheeks of her bum. He says, so I leaned forward, and I pulled it out, and she elbowed me right in the eye. He says, for God's sake, he says, you don't have any brains. He says, what do you expect? Women don't like to be touched like that. <laughs> oh, you know, he says, uh, I'm coming back for the service tonight. So he comes back for the service that night, and he comes in. Now he's got two black eyes. <laughs> he says, for God's sake, John, what happened to your other eye? Ah, he says, it was the same thing. He says, up and down, up and down, and the lady stood up, and her dress was caught between the cheeks of her bum again. He said, he said so the guy next to me, leaned forward and pulled it out. He says, so how come you've got a black eye? Ah, oh, he says, I knew she didn't like that. He says, so I tucked it back in again. <laughs> you can do anything, like any move, it doesn't matter. trying to say whether well, I should do something silly or something with, with more, more harmony attached to it. So we've decided that, that you're such good singers that we're going to do a Scottish song called The Broom of Cowden Nows. I like it so far. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, you don't you? Do. More, more. In Scotland, where the men are men and the sheep are nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You laugh too knowingly about that in front there. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you're supposed to hold that while you play the banjo. Whoops. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. So there I was. Hmm. Fixing my microphone and wondering what had gone wrong. <laughs> yes, we always, when we, when we make love, when we make love to our sheep, we always do it on the edge of the cliff because they push back harder. <laughs> um, we, we know our animal husbandry. Don't mess I, with us, kiddo, I'll tell you. I, I'm thinking my contract with this band just ran out. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Okay, here's the chorus. That was the chorus. He's actually going to sing, I'll remember you. This is a great Scottish song. It's a song about class consciousness and how the guy is courting the wrong girl and gets run out of town because, because yeah, she, sheep's mother didn't like him. <laughs> so the farmer says, I'm selling the land for, for building houses, he says, but only in one condition. He says, what, did you leave that tree standing and that tree standing? So the builder says, why? He says, well, under that tree there, I had my first sexual experience. Oh, he says, what about that tree? He says, well, her mother stood there and watched us. <laughs> I said, Chris, what did she say? She went, but... <laughs> oh, that's enough. That's, that's, these are disgusting. <laughs> it's just as well the ark is moving. They're not going to tell us where they moved to. <laughs> Your reputation has been lambasted. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, he's getting the chop, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the chorus. Oh, the broom. Oh, 
the bonny, bonny broom, the broom of the cow dead Fain would I be in the north country, held in my faithless This is a, uh, a song. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is a song by a wonderful and incredibly prolific songwriter uh, called Ewan McCall, who died a few years ago. Um, he was really a sort of a pillar of the folk revival in the 50s and 60s in, in Britain. And, uh, but he didn't write this song until fairly close to the end of his own life. Uh, when he suddenly wrote two songs, both of them great songs, one about his mother and one about his father. And uh, this one is about his father. It's, uh, <coughs> it talks about um, his father's work as uh, a molder in an iron foundry. And uh, when Ewan uh, introduced this, he said that he went, used to go and visit his father. This was in Salford in Lancashire, which is a real in was a real industrial hole. I think it's been cleaned up a little bit now. but. Um, he said it was like visiting you know, Dante's Inferno. It was just an incredible place. Uh, anyway, he uh, was laid off in the 30s and uh, basically never recovered from that. So this is a song about, about uh, Ewan's father. It's called My Old Man. We'll see whether E-flat sounds all right. Yeah. <laughs> a good old man he worked in the molding trade in the stinking heat of an iron foundry my old man was made down on his knees in the molding sand he wore his trade like a company brand he was one of the cyclops smoky band yes that was my old man now my old man, he wasn't really old It was just that I was young And anyone over twelve years old Was halfway to the tomb He was loyal to his workmates all his life He gave his pay packet to his wife Had a couple of jars on a Saturday night Yes, that was my old man Now my old man, he was a union man At home on the foundry floor Until that day they laid him off And shoved him through the door They gave him his card, said times are slack We've got a machine, can learn the knack of doing your job so don't come back the end of my old man now my old man he was 51 and what was he to do a craftsman molder on the dole in 1932 he said he had given all he could give So he did what thousands of others did Abandoned hope and the will to live It killed him, my old man Now my old man, he is dead and gone And I am your old man and my advice to you, my son, is to fight back while you can. Look out for the man with the silicon chip, 
Hold on to your job with a good firm grip For if you don't, you'll have had your chips The same as my old man Thank you. This is a Phil Cunningham tune called the Ross Memorial Hospital. Aye, aye, aye. Jagger on Scottish tune, aye. It's not real porridge. Mr. Sound person, could you give me a little bit more uh, voice in the monitor here? Turn up the talent filter while you're <laughs> at it. <laughs> which, which voice did you want in your monitor? Oh. I want the one that my mother always said I should speak like. <laughs> so, a fellow's walking down the road and he's, he sees a sign outside a pub that says, Good food, good beer, and a friendly word. He thinks, that's for me. So he goes in. A grotty place, dismal and Tells me the bar's looking very uncheerfully. He says, good evening. Hi. He says, uh, I'd like a pint of your very best bitter, please. Okay. And here's this rather slimy looking pint, you know, with things floating in it and no head and it's only half full. He says, thanks very much. Hmm. He said, um, I'd like something to eat. What do you have? Uh, pies. Well, I'll have a pie then. There you go. And there's this rather nasty pie arrives, kind of swimming in grease. So by this time, he's beginning to think there's a bit of misleading advertising going on. He says, oh, well, he says, um, 
how about the friendly word then? He says, don't eat the pie. <laughs> 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 or, or there's a whole lot of jokes, you know, uh, pub jokes about um, talking animals in pubs. It's never been my experience, actually. It's not, at least not early in the day, you know. But, you know, where <laughs> folk, folk go in with animals that talk. Like, I goes into a pub with a dog, and he says, my, my dog here, he says, this dog can speak fluent English. I <laughs> said, go on. He says, I can. He says, go on, say something. Dog says, well, it's a really nice bar you have here. Yes, I'd like it. Can I have a bowl of water, please? Just down. The guy says, it's incredible. He says, I'll tell you what, he says, the guy that owns the pub across the road has a weak heart. If you go across there and just walk in and say what you said to me, you know, say to him, I mean, I'll be, I'll be the end of him. He says, I'll be great because I'll be the only pub in the street. Would you do that? The dog says, oh, sure, yes, certainly. He says, well, here's $10. Tucks it under his collar. He says, now, off you go and come back and tell me how you got on. Dog says, yep, well, won't be long. Bye. So the dog goes away. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait. And the owner says, enough a long time just to say hello, you know. I hope he's all right. It's an expensive dog, that. Oh, I, I'll just go and check. So he opens the door of the pub, and the dog has only made it to the gutter. And he's in the gutter, humping away at a female dog, right? He says, wait, what the hell are you doing? You've never done that before. Dog says, well, I've never had $10 before. <laughs> 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 yeah. Actually, it does remind me of one where the guy oh, goes. Oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that button, okay? Yeah. <laughs> guy goes into the bar with an octopus and says, This octopus can play any musical instrument you like. Oh, no. <laughs> so, that was the end of that, right? Uh, so, the Englishman says, Well, can it play the penny whistle? Of course, it can play the bloody penny whistle. So, he gives it to the octopus, and the octopus. Please away, it's marvellous. And in fact, he's had a bet on, so they all give him money. So yeah, along comes an Irishman and says, can you play the banjo? He says, of course I can play the banjo. Eight hands, what do you think they're for? He plays the banjo. Great. So a Scotsman comes up and says, can you play the bagpipe? Of course I can play the bagpipe. <laughs> <laughs> just, just shut up and take this quietly, OK? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's totally country. <laughs> Of course he can play the bagpipe. So he gives the bagpipe to the octopus, and the octopus huffs and puffs and huffs and puffs and puffs and huffs. Not a sound. So, of course, the guy has lost all his bets. He has to give all his money out, and he's really pissed off. So he grabs the octopus, takes it outside. The octopus can speak, by the way. I forgot to mention that. He says to him, <laughs> some bloody musician, you, he says. You can't even play the bloody bagpipes. The octopus says, play them. I was trying to screw them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here's our actually. <laughs> can we have can we on the last pub joke where a guy goes in the pub and says, Who owns a great dinner? Like, uh, guy yeah. says, I do, why? She says, My dog just killed it. She says, What what kind of dog mm. have you got that can kill a great dane? He says, A chihuahua. She says, How the hell did it kill a great dane? He says, I think it's stuck in its throat. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, so sing, sing. sing. Oh, you guys are too kind. Here's an industrial folk song. It's called the Swan Necked Valve. It's an old tune called the Keek and the Creel. Is that word again? The Keek and the Creel. Oh, oh no, you're still there. Oh. Um, but the song is actually about the end of an apprenticeship. When you end your apprenticeship, you know you have to make something. Like if you work in sheet metal, you make a wee tin lunchbox. You know if you work in General Motors, you make a car, I suppose. You know. <laughs> So this guy wasn't a brass foundry, and so he had to make a brass foundry thing, right? In this case, a swan neck valve, which was a kind of double turning, and it made a double cut. I never understood a word of this song, you know. <laughs> For the years, I was singing it one time, and it's all about, I made a double casting, and I made the tap and drag, and I'm hoping nobody understands what I'm going on. And there were two guys in the audience going, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, shit. <laughs> so they explained to me this song. Come and talk to me afterwards, I'll tell you about it. Swan neck valve. It has a chorus. Ricky do dum da. This is an old swan neck valving chorus. This. Ricky do dum da, do dum da, Ricky, Ricky do dum de. When Sparklight was in Brighton and my time was nearly out, what happened in the monkey shop? I'll tell you all about Ricky do dum da, do dum da, Ricky, Ricky do dum da. Well, a sneezer or a job come in, and I was left to solve the problems of the making. Oh, a swan neck valve. Ricky do dum da, do 
dum da re ki re ki dum dum de. I looked at it and I wondered where the person I should mark. And sign I wish the gaffer he would come and take it back. Re ki re ki dum da do dum da re ki re ki dum dum de. But no one came to save me, and I had to make a deal. I worked with repetition on the swan egg bell. Re ki re ki dum da do dum da re ki re ki dum dum de. My mates all looked at me and said, "You never will evolve." The system for the making of a swan egg bell. Re ki re ki dum da do dum da re ki re ki dum dum de. I took a double curtain and a tap and drag as well. And every snug good old box you've seen that kind of sell. Re ki re ki dum da do dum da re ki re ki dum dum de. I took a rod for six feet long, stuck it in the side. And in the absence of a clap, that was my only guide. Reki do dum da, do dum da, reki reki do dum de. My knees began to tremble, and I worked with grim resolve. That rod stood like a mast upon the swan neck bow. Reki do dum da, do dum da, reki reki do dum de. My brother Sammy, for to help me close and cast. Oh, sign the first thing that he did was call away my mask. Reggie do dum da, do dum da, Reggie Reggie do dum de. So now I didn't hear a guide, my head seemed to revolve. But pert by pert, we closed by guess that swan neck bow. Reggie do dum da, do dum da, Reggie Reggie do dum de. What we're trying to plan out, what we're going to sing here, <coughs> uh, is it okay if we take this concert to twelve o'clock? Will that be all right? Because it depends on when it is and what. We've got a couple of songs we'd really like to sing to you, and other ones I just totally throw away, like he sings, you know. Like just... So we're going to twelve o'clock, okay? Yeah, but twelve o'clock tomorrow night we're talking. About. <laughs> talking about noon. <laughs> all right. Well. Um... I have a song um, I want that in which I wanted to celebrate, I suppose, what you might classify as the small C courageous people in this world. People who don't make it into the papers but still make strong, life-changing decisions and stick by them their whole lives. And I'm sure there are many of people like that in the room. And I set this story the early years of World War II. Tough time to have certain opinions, and there is a chorus. When it comes up a few times, it's a lot of words, but get any bit you can hum along. And though at times I cursed and ranted, I never once my vow recanted. I challenged rules, I laughed at fashion, and for my lover saved my deepest passion. No, no, no. I wasn't exactly thinking of you, Tam, but I'm glad. You thought that way. <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> there was a good one out there in the audience. All right. Your chance, have no regrets. 
That's all I ask for what I'm giving Sounds fair, I said You're on, I said Next thing I knew, my lungs got busy And so began my turn at life What made me think it would be times I cursed and ranted, I never once my vow recanted. I challenged rules, I laughed at fashion, and for my lover saved my deepest passion. In 41, I refused conscription. I wouldn't go. I couldn't kill. It's not my war, was my conviction. So I went north. They shipped me north. A so-called camp for risky cases. That's where we met, our gazes caught, and longing blushed in both our faces. And though at times I cursed and ranted, I never once my vow recanted. I challenged rules, I laughed at fashion. And for my lover, saved my deepest passion. She's not your kind. You're not her kind. It isn't done, your snubbing custom. Those foreign ways, her slanted eyes. Take it from us, you just can't trust them. Ah, how we laughed, so good to laugh. For 50 years we shamed predictions. Sure bricks were hurled and curses spat. But none could pierce our linked affections And though at times I cursed and ranted I never once my vow recanted I challenged rules, I laughed at fashion And for my lover saved my deepest passion too fast. The bed we shared is now half empty. I cup your hand inside my own. Feels real as life, this potent memory. A thousand times, ten thousand times, your hand in mine held fierce, held gently on winter strolls or picket lines. Tethered by touch were we contently, and though at times I cursed and ranted, I never once my vow recanted. I challenged rules, I laughed at fashion, and for my lover saved my deepest passion. I'm 80 now, well, almost now. A single day is all that's pending. One more 
daybreak, a last sunset. The simple deal is simply ending. I got my chance, one precious chance. What time I owned was never squandered. I vowed a life of no regrets. And so it was by fortune rendered. And though at times I cursed and ranted, I never once my vow recanted. I challenged rules, I laughed at fashion. And for my lover, saved my deepest passion. And though at times he cursed and ranted, he never once his vow recanted. He challenged rules, he laughed at fashion, and for his lover saved his deepest passion. Yeah, we should. <coughs> Thank you for that. All right, we should play some tunes. Here. How about uh, playing play some right? tunes, and then we'll have uh, another round of songs here and there, and Pardon? play some with the pipes. All right, we'll think about that in the next round. All right. <coughs> It, it is true what Tam said. He wasn't just kidding. We don't know what each of us will sing when we get up here. So it's as entertaining for us, but it also means we bring up everything we have just in case. Uh, so so people were pointing to the pipes Hello. here. We may still get to them. The Northumbrian small pipe. In the meantime, we are going to play you a set of tunes. Planks to Irwin, Rolling Waves, oh, and wait, Tripping man, Upstairs. Man, man. Yes, you need your Mando there, too. This isn't the chords for the music. This is just a reminder of what the hell we were trying to do the last time we did it. Speaking for yourself. Right. I need a mandolin for this. That's why. I will help you search here. There just happens to be one on the floor behind you. <laughs> and lo, a mandolin appears. Mandolin. It's an Italian mandolin made in Canada. It's one of a kind, it's the only one in the world. I, I took it to the guy who made it and he says the only one he ever made. Honest truth. So there you go. His name was Benko.
In the Highlands of Scotland, there is a Catholic priest and a Scottish Presbyterian minister who pass each other every day on their bicycles going to their appropriate churches on Sundays. Good morning, Father, how are you? Ah, good morning, Minister, how are you? And one day, the Father is walking. Well, good morning, Father. Good morning, man. Father, where's your bicycle? He says, you know, someone has stolen it. And the Minister says, you know, whenever something bad happens in my parish, he says, I always preach the Ten Commandments. And when I come to the appropriate commandment, I look around and I always see the guilty party with a red face and I know who did the crime. So, so the minister, the priest says, I'm going to try that. Next Sunday, there's the priest on his bicycle. Good morning, minister. Good morning, father. I see you've got your bicycle back. The Ten Commandments worked. He says, yes, they did indeed. He says, when I reached thou shalt not commit adultery, I remembered where I left my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be <coughs> Well, most of you know we lost David Parry last year, and very sad thing. We also lost Stu Cameron a number of years before that. And on Monday, on the New Year's Day, we get news that Hamish Imlach, the great Scottish singer, also died the way he wanted to go, with a glass of wine in his hand, saying Happy New Year to everybody, and out he went. And Hamish didn't actually play the art, but he, th he threatened many times. I think they booked him two or three times, and he cancelled each time. So apparently there wasn't enough booze in it or something, I don't know. But uh, this song I learned, I learned before anything happened to David because I wanted to sing it to him because it sort of was David's life. David was a theatrical. Those of you who know him, he was wonderful on stage. He, he could tell stories. He could act out songs as he's singing them. He could, theater was his life. He spent, he spent half his life doing some bloody PhD on medieval drama. Uh, that and creative taxi driving, I think he learned at the same time. But anyway, <laughs> David was, a, he was very, he should have been an actor. He was working for the government at the Museum of Civilization doing, what is it called, Ian, exactly? He was uh, director of live interpretation, which meant he was he was in charge of a a, a troupe of actors who um, did little dramatic vignettes to to illustrate a particular exhibit area, and uh, it, it was really quite something to watch. It was really uh, an amazing, an amazing addition to the museum. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the government killed him. You know, they <laughs> cut his budget in half and made him work twice as hard. The and government's just killing us all. In the end. Oh yeah. Not killing me. I'm not going to have those bastards. I thought it was the hamburgers. I'm going to I'm going to get them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is a song which I learned for David, and he went, and, I, and I'm singing it two more times, and I probably won't sing it. You're not in tune with the band. Not that that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me with that thing. Basic requirement Did you is see her give me the finger? Oh no, it was the other one. <laughs> it was this one. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she hasn't been paid yet. <laughs> Sherry, I, th I think I see his pants stuck in the cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Although I happen to know how much he likes it. <laughs> yeah, the, there was a there was a headline in the in the newspaper in the Second World War which said, "British push bottles up Germans." <laughs> your bass string is flat. Speaking of the Second World War, 
Senior British officer inspecting the sick bay. There's three privates lying to attention in three beds. He goes to the first one and he says, Well, you, my man, he said, and what's wrong with you? He said, um, venereal disease, sir. He said, I see. And uh, what are you taking for it? He said, wire brush and detol, sir. He said, really? And uh, what does that involve? He said, well, you, you stick the wire brush in the detol and then you scrub the infected area. He said, oh, I see. Hmm. He said, um, well, uh, do you have any ambitions when you recover? He said, yes, sir, I want to get back in uniform as quick as I can and serve my queen. Or my king, in that case. Serve my king. Jolly, jolly good, he says. Here's a medal for you. There you are. Goes to the next bed and says, what's wrong with you, my man? He said, hemorrhoid, sir. Hemorrhoid, he says. Jolly, jolly good. And what are you taking for it? Wire brush and detol, sir, he said. Wire brush and detol, he says. What do you do? He said, well, you dip the wire brush in the detol and you scrub the infected air. Jolly good, he said. Huh. Do you have any ambitions when you're out of this terrible predicament? Oh, yes, sir. Back in uniform, quick as I can, serve my king and country. Jolly good, he said. That deserves a medal. I think uh, we only medal. Yeah, one of these yellow ones. I think. Yeah. Well done, sir. So he goes to the third bed and he says, and what's wrong with you, my man? He says, laryngitis, sir. Laryngitis, he says. And what are you taking for it? Wire brush and detol, sir. He said. Really, he said, yes. And what do you do? He says, you dip the wire brush in the detol and then you scrub the infected area. I see, he said, and do you have any ambitions when you're out of this? Oh, yes, sir, he said, I want to get to that wire brush before these other two chaps. <laughs> so the young soldier threw down his rifle and ran, and he knocked down a superior officer as he was running away. He says, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, sorry, Sergeant, I just panicked. He says, I beg your pardon, says, I'm not a sergeant, I'm a major. He says, oh, fuck, did they run that far? <laughs> <laughs> so, dedicated to David Parry, Stu Cameron, Hamish and Black, but mostly for David Parry. He's got first one. Like you guys just play loud. <laughs> uh, the chorus, the co it's a good chorus, goodbye and farewell. You'll hear the chorus. It's about a thespian, a retired thespian. Or he's not quite retired, but he's elderly. He's been in the theatre all his life. When I was a young boy and eager For the footlights and fortune and fame I met an old tripper, his name it was Sam and he taught me the rules of the game Yes, he taught me the ways of the theatre How always the show must go on I learned how to enter, to stand, take a bow Whenever I'd sing this song Goodbye and bid you and farewell I've loved you and now I must leave you With a smile and a song as we part Show's over, it's time to be gone Perhaps I will see you next year I'll have a new tale to amuse you Many new tunes you will hear I'm a minstrel I've played all the small country theatres And toured round the old music hall I've died in the first house on a wet Monday night And I've lived to take six curtain calls I starred like a beggar on Broadway to broke down the Champs Elysees, but when the show's over and the curtain comes down, I can always smile and say goodbye and bid you and farewell. I've loved you and now I must leave you with a smile and a song as we part. Show's over, it's time to be gone Perhaps I will see you next year We'll have a new tale to amuse you Many new tunes you will hear 
was bad and the boat laid up. Though me and the lad weren't shirkers, when a bloke came into our village pub and he say he's looking for workers. Well, he talked like a bit of a yank, I thought. Oh, he stood us a couple or three. And he say, they're building a hoily rig to get hoil from out of the sea. <laughs> he say, there's plenty of riches for all and gas as well as hoil. And all he wanted from us local chaps was some w help with the work and the toil. Well, how much do we earn, I venture to ask? Ooh, 20, 30 pounds or more? Is that a month, I say? And he laughed. No, a week, and maybe more. Well, I went and I told the missus this yarn. I've heard these yarns afore. I couldn't see out of any good could come of drilling these holes offshore. I'd rather work the boat with the boy. But the missus, she sit and she fret. You'd earn more there in a week, she said, an old bloody year with your net. Well, in the end, I took the job. And the boy, he's on the tug. Well, I thought some good might come of it if it's only some beer in me mug. We worked on this, this platform thing, you see. And the drill, it went wee, wee. Whee! And we drilled this bloody great big round hole in the bottom of the old North Sea. Well, there weren't no oil. There weren't no gas. Not a sight nor a smell we, we found. Then one day, the boy says to me, Here, Dad, 
Our tug's aground. Well, I looked overside and the boy was right. There was water leaving the tug and swirling away down this hole we'd made, like out of a bathroom plug. <laughs> well, I looked all around, and everywhere I spy, there's boats and ships and liners aground, and the fish all high and dry. It was just like a desert boy, enough to make a man afraid, and the last of the sea going, glug, glug, glug. <laughs> down this bloody great hole we'd made. Then a hiss and a roar and a cloud of steam out of our hole it came. And up popped the head of the devil himself. Here, what's your bleeding game? You've flooded all me furnaces and put me fires out and hell's all cold and sodden wet, you puddin-headed lout. <laughs> Blast your bloody hoily rig. You'd make an angel sob. I'll never get hell hot again. I've lost me bloody job. <laughs> right royal he were. But I just laughed, for I didn't give a mite. You'll burn no more souls, I say, without a bloody light. <laughs> ah, so we did some good with our hoily rig. We doused hell in a hurry. So now when you die, there's only heaven. So no more need to worry. <laughs> and I wish I could do that half as well as David Perry could. <laughs> well, this night is nearly over. And the music's almost gone Heard the fiddler and the piper The singer and the song The time has come for us to leave ye One more song before we go Say button up and I be cheery And tack a drum before ye go Say button up and I be cheery And tack a drum before you go For this night we will remember For the music's been just fine But the cold grey land of Keithness Can be cruel and unkind So we must bid farewell and leave ye Travel through the ice and snow So button up and I be cheery And tack a drum before ye go Say button up and I be cheery And tack a drum before ye go And God go with you and watch over you until we can meet again together and our glasses we will fill. We will drink a toast to absent friends and let the beer and whiskey flow. Say button up and I be cheery and tack a drum for you. Say button up and I be cheery and tack a drum before you go. Well, you guys are wonderful. Of course, you're suckers too, you know that, don't you? We've got your money now, what do we get? <laughs> We are going to finish with a set of dance tunes and uh, 
behalf of the band, thanks for coming out and thanks for staying late. We just like to play and play and, you know, sometimes that doesn't work with babysitter schedules and things, but uh, uh, thanks for staying and listening and yeah. clapping and, and spending every penny you own on the product outside, which I assume you've done, right? Am I right? Good, good, very good. So, Alistair, Lawrence, good. Ian, me, good. Sherry at the back here, the nice quiet girl that she is. But she's from Detroit, boy, you're in shit. Royal here. Oak. Don't cross Royal her, though, you've had it. Sherry Whelan. And we'd like to say goodnight with this set of tunes. The Oak Pick Waltz and what the hell's the other one? La Galop, Galop de la Baie Saint Paul. La Galop de la Baie Saint Paul is and another Frenchman. And a. Oak Pick is a. An owl. An owl. An owl. There you go. And I used to think it was a petrified walrus's penis, but it's not. That's something else. That's an usic. It's an understandable mistake, isn't it? (laughs) 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 Oh, great. There's only four strings. <laughs> yeah, it's a don't play me. Okay. It ain't long. I think it's the drugs. <laughs> you know about that? Okay. Count me in. One, two, three. One, two. <laughs>
And he wants to dance at the back, now's your chance. Great night.